Welcome to Africa to You. I'm your host, Vivian Birchall. In this episode, I will share some of Africa's contributions to the world. When we think of Africa, the image that often comes to mind is one of poor starving children and women or chaotic hostile males killing each other. Or we think of a place rich in raw natural resources that can be exploited. There are parts of Africa where each of these is the case, but they provide a very incomplete picture of Africa. Most of the world does not know the extent of Africa's contributions to everyone's way of life. Many African contributions have been appropriated by Western culture, but often with little effort to understand the differences between African and Western ways of life, leading to the negative branding of an entire continent as primitive. This negative presentation of Africa has happened not only in public speech and media, but also in writing of history books and teaching at schools. Many people feel the urge to distance themselves from any possible connection to Africa because of how the continent has been branded and many continue to question the autonomy of Africa's contribution to the world in science, art, and other aspects of life. But if one takes the time to intentionally learn about Africa, one will appreciate its contributions. One of Africa to use goals is to take inventory of African cultural heritage in the spheres of traditions, history, and arts through literature review, personal experiences of Africans and other sources, and share this with the communities that we live in. Today, I'm going to share with you some of the things that Africa has contributed to the world. To begin, Africa is of course the world's oldest populated area, so we all have our ancestry in Africa. And it is safe to assume that all knowledge of survival techniques originated in Africa, even though these techniques have evolved with civilization. Similarly, the domestication of fire almost certainly took place in Africa and helped make it possible to migrate to colder regions. The continent has 30% of Earth's remaining mineral resources. It has the largest reserves in, of precious metals with 40% of gold reserves, over 60% of cobalt reserves and 90% of platinum reserves. Looking at these statistics alone, one could easily wonder why Africa as a continent is considered the poorest in economic terms. That's a question, of course, for another time. Do you eat gum? If you have a packet with you, take it out and look at its ingredients. Do you see acacia gum or gum arabica on the list? It is the substance that makes the gum chewy, a natural gum made from the hardened sap of various acacia trees which grow from Senegal to Sudan. It's used as a thickening agent in shampoos, marshmallows, glues, and many other common products. 80% of the world's supply is produced in Sudan. The word Arabica will also be familiar to coffee drinkers and coffee was first cultivated in Ethiopia. We believe that Ethiopians, in Ethiopia it grows wild. And uh, we also believe in Eth Ethiopians were the first to domesticate two of the world's most popular pack animals, the donkeys and camels. In one of my earlier episodes, I described how autopsies and caesarean sections were routinely and effectively carried out by surgeons in pre-colonial Uganda, and Maasai warriors had mastered the art of surgical procedures for lung injuries. When Robert Falcon returned to Britain from Africa in 1800s, he shared with his peers his account of a successful caesarean birth in the Bunyoro Kingdom of Western Uganda. At a time when the, most of the world viewed caesarean sections as a way to save the baby of a mother who would surely die, the Banyoro mother and child both survived. 
More recently, the first successful human heart transplant was performed in 1967 at a hospital in Cape Town, South Africa. And in 2014, South Africa's Stellenbosch University was the first site uh, for a successful penis transplant. Successful enough that the recipient met his girlfriend pregnant within a few months. Much of his story of the Abrahamic religions in, is interwoven with that of Northern Africa, with Egypt figuring prominently in the Jewish and Christian scriptures. Christianity took root in Africa as early as the first century in present day Ethiopia, Egypt and Sudan and African Christians influence Christianity in the rest of the world. In music, historian John Reeder wrote in 1997 that a flute-like drilled bone made more than 45,000 years ago and found in a cave in Libya was the world's oldest known musical instrument to be distinguished from simple one-knot whistles which go back perhaps 100,000 years ago. More musical instruments from the Neanderthal era have been discovered in recent years, but the Libyan flute would still certainly be one of the earliest. It is believed to have been played for leisure or to in imitate the calls that would lure birds and animals into traps. It is logical that early humans migrating from Africa through Middle East and into Europe would have brought their musical practice with them. Perhaps they also brought musical instruments. Of course, mentioning mus musical instruments made of, bo of bone reminds me of the Ishango and Lebombo bones, which I have also described in previous episodes. These bones found thousands of miles apart in Uganda, Congo border and Swaziland date to more than 20,000 years ago. They have notches on them, which some historians and mathematicians believe to represent a lunar calendar, a woman's menstrual cycle, or ways of converting between counting systems. They are believed to be the world's oldest mathematical tools. Cities. Cities came from Africa. From 1500 to 900 B BC, the Egyptian city of Thebes, not to be confused with the one in Greece, may have been the most populous in the world with more than 75,000 residents. Another Egyptian city, Cahun, was the first planned city in the world dating to before 1800 BC. Built to house workers who were constructing a pyramid nearby, it laid out an orderly rectangular manner with standardized houses. Low-level workers lived in smaller houses in the uh, lower part of the city, while the elites lived in larger houses uphill. Speaking of pyramids, did you know that there are more in Sudan than Egypt? Well, during the ancient Kushite Kingdom of Sudan, more than 250 pyramids were built. In the modern era, Namibia was the first country in the world to incorporate environmental protection into its constitution. It is considered the third base stargazing destination in the world after Hawaii and Chile. Most children among Namibia's indigenous sun people can identify 200 species of plants by age 12, and adults can identify over 300. I hope you have learned something new about Africa's contribution to the world. You can visit us at www.africatu.org or email me at uh, africatu.vivian at gmail.com or visit our Acton TV YouTube channel to, for more about Africa. So thank you for being with us. Till next time. Mm -hmm.